it be nice if we could wake up, grab a brush and put a little makeup. Hi, this guy's to fade away the shakeup. Hello, friends. It's been a year. I don't know how to talk to a camera. It's been a bad year. So here's a paint tutorial to hopefully quell some of the rage that's been building in you. And I hope you guys enjoy it. And I hope 2021 is a much better year for all of us. And I'll uh, see you guys soon. 2020, you are out. You have been voted off the island. Please get your things and take your leave. Goodbye. You're gonna need a canvas. I chose a heart-shaped canvas because I'm in love with the struggle. You're gonna need a cup of water without lemon. Sorry. You're gonna need some brushes of unusual size. I chose a large angled brush, a large fluffy brush, and a small boy for details. Get some paper towels to dab away your 2020 tears. You're gonna need your dignity. <laughs> No, not that last one. Just <laughs> You're a good sport. You're gonna need some acrylic paints. I'm using white, baby pink, magenta, lavender, and a light orange. But you can choose whatever colors you like or have on hand. It's really up to you. You can customize this piece however you like. If you have more saturated pink colors than the colors that I'm using, you can add white to them to make them more pastel or you can mute them down by adding a small amount that's the opposite color of them on the color wheel. For example, if you have a very bright orange and you want it to be a little bit softer, you can add just a tiny bit of blue to it and that'll take some of the saturation out. I have a disposable bowl set aside for a palette, but I'm going to mix my background color directly on the canvas. I'm gonna take my large angled brush and give that boy a little bit of water and then I'm gonna start working the paint back and forth across the canvas to blend it. I'm going for a lavender and pink sky with some streaks of color standing out instead of being fully blended together. Here you can see my first mistake, which is putting way too much paint on this little canvas. What can I say? I got a little too excited with the pink. Is anyone really surprised? No, no one's surprised. What I want initially is a fairly smooth background and when I realized I had too much paint down to achieve that, I just grabbed an extra canvas that I had lying around and transferred the paint onto the other canvas instead of just wiping it off and wasting it. Guess it wasn't a mistake at all, because later this day I used the extra canvas to paint a donut. Will wonders never cease? Once I removed the excess paint, I continued to work the angled brush back and forth across my canvas until it was completely covered. I also like painting the sides of my canvas, but some people don't, so totally optional. It's your painting, your choice. Do what the canvas tells you. If you did the opposite of me and put too little paint on your canvas to start, you can just add small amounts back in and keep working that paintbrush back and forth across the canvas until it's completely covered and you're happy with your blend. Remember, it doesn't have to be uniform or perfect. It can also help to have a reference photo. And if it's helpful to you, you can search for a pastel sky photo for guidance. All right, good work. We're gonna let this bad boy dry. Come back, check to see if it's dry. <sighs> it wasn't dry yet. <laughs> okay, we're looking good this time. 
I'm going to put a dab of white paint on my super fancy palette and a dab of that baby pink paint again. I'm going to wet my large fluffy brush, my round brush, and take a small amount of each color and start sketching out the tops of some clouds. I'm using light semicircular motions just to get some of the paint and placement down on the canvas. If you're feeling unsure about painting things from memory or imagination, again, I super encourage you to use reference photos. Google you some clouds. Nine times out of 10, I use a reference photo for my work and it helps me out tremendously. So don't be afraid to use that resource. Once I've got my generic cloud placement down, I'm going to wipe most of the extra paint off of my brush and then go back in with tiny circular buffing motions to blur the paint on the canvas and the remaining paint on my brush outward and downward to really give those clouds their signature puffity fluffity look. It can take some practice to get comfortable with different techniques and different brushes, but the more you practice, the easier it gets. So just do what feels right to you right now and don't worry too much about perfectionism. You might find that you have to add small amounts of paint to the tops of the clouds and then keep blending that new paint out and down a couple of times to get the look that you want. Okay, you can let your cloud layers dry or you can keep working on them depending on what you're comfortable with. I'm gonna take more of the pink paint to bulk up my clouds a little bit more. I like them plumpy. I think the key is to keep working until you're satisfied and then stop before you go too far and ruin everything. But that's my brand, that's my signature move, so I'm gonna keep going. The good thing about working on a canvas instead of a drawing that's on paper is that you can just paint over it if you mess up. I think we all have a canvas of shame that's been rejected and painted over multiple times. Right now mine's blue. I also like to wrap my images around the sides of my canvas, but that's again, optional. Do what you want. It's your painting.
Your girl was feeling adventurous, so I took just a little bit of my light orange paint and added that into the clouds for some dimension and a little pop of color. And because I have no self-control, depending on the activity that I'm doing, totally optional. If you wanna add some cool pops of color or highlights to your clouds, you could also use yellow, you could use a different shade of pink, whatever you like. Don't be afraid to mix it up. The hands down best tip I've ever gotten about painting is to occasionally step back from your work and view it at a distance. As we work, we get used to seeing the tiny perceived imperfections of our art, but upon stepping away to a distance that you would actually be viewing the piece at, all of the little annoying blobs of color magically blend together to create the image that you were going for. So painting isn't about rendering things exactly as they are, it's an illusion. Don't be too hard on yourself if up close your painting looks like a mess. It's supposed to look like crazy brush strokes and blobs. It's supposed to look like two raccoons fought an Agni Kai through your wet paint. It's all gonna be Daijobu. When you're feeling fancy fresh with your clouds, make sure your canvas is completely dry before moving on to the next step. So let's give this boy some stars. I'm taking a little bit of water and mixing it with the white paint. It takes a bit to get the feel of the consistency, as you will see shortly. Not so wet that it drips everywhere, but not so dry that it doesn't want to splatter. Mm, yep, there it goes. No worries, we adapt and keep moving. Your splatter's gonna change depending on the consistency of the paint, the size of the brush that you're using, how close you are to the canvas, and how much caffeine you had that morning. Luckily, if you have any spots that you despise in particular, you can take a corner of your paper towel, or even a clean dry brush and gently exact revenge on it for attempting to destroy your masterpiece. If you're like me and you hate everything that you do, you can also just wipe it away if the paint is still wet. Lightly wetting the paper towel will also help you with this as well. It's kind of like an eraser for your canvas. Yep, round two, not enough water. We adapt and grow, no worries.
Once you have the most shiniest stars in all the world laid down on your canvas, you can clean them up as we did before, if needed. You can add more defined stars with your small boy brush if you're feeling really anal retentive about it. Since I can't stop, won't stop, I'm also using the extra white paint on my brush to add a little bit more highlight to my clouds. Now's a good time to play with your background a bit. Do you wanna add a rainbow, a shooting star, an epic battle between the Enterprise and the Death Star? Do you, treat yourself. I decided to add a little moon because I can. I'm first going in with my white paint to define the shape, and then I'm gonna add little dots of pink and just a tiny baby amount of orange for some depth and detail. It almost doesn't matter because I'm going to cover the whole thing with glitter later anyways. Once you're finished with your background details, let the canvas dry completely before moving on to the next step. All right, my dudes, it's time. Get your expletive of choice ready because we are about to bid our sweet rotting 2020 a very overdue farewell. I'm gonna use my magenta paint and mix it with just a little bit of baby pink to calm it down. Stop! I am about to freehand my expletive like an idiot that just drank a gallon of happy juice. 
Freehanding words is scary and awful. I don't know why I'm like this. Don't be afraid to use paint markers for this, or at least some sort of marker, chalk, colored pencil, anything you want to sketch out your letters first. You don't have to go full mad lad on this part. You can be smart. You can be a Ravenclaw instead. For all my Hufflepuffs, we are going to freehand. Here we go. If you're gonna freehand your letters, my advice is to look at the whole canvas with your peripheral vision as you write. And that's the little fuzzy vision that you see out of the corners of your eyes when you kind of allow your eyes to unfocus from something. You can see the full vision of the canvas instead of focusing on one letter at a time. This will allow you to account for the size, spacing, and direction of your letters in relation to one another. I like to go in lightly with my paint at first to just get the placement down, and then I'll go back in with more paint to fill out the letters and make them more legible. You can use the erasing technique we did earlier with the stars if you need to by using a damp paper towel or a slightly damp brush to wipe away any areas that have angered you. Rinse and repeat until you've got your message across. If you find that your paint is a little bit too thick and isn't gliding well, you can add very small amounts of water to it that'll help it glide a little bit better.
gonna go in and use the baby pink paint just to add some aesthetic highlights to my letters. Last but not least, I'm using some acrylic glitter paint on everything. Highlights on the letters, the stars, the moon, the clouds, the more glitter, the better. The more glitter, the more shining light will emit from your painting, thus blinding you to just how awful 2020 actually was. If someone tries to tell you that real artists don't use glitter, kick them in the shin, steal their wallet, and then go use it to buy more glitter. Life is too short to take criticism from people that you wouldn't ask for advice and too rude to spend doing things that don't make you happy. Use the glitter. Be the glitter. All right, that's it, my dudes. I hope you had fun painting with me. I hope this tutorial wasn't an actual mess, just a slight mess. That's what we're always aiming for. And I hope 2021 is amazing for all of us. Keep fighting the good fight, and I'll see you guys next time in the new year. Bye-bye.